All right, Spin TV family from all the way in the land of the rising sun, I'm Jamie Thomas, and we are bringing you coverage of Saturday's fifth round. It's Championship Saturday at Nasu Highland Golf Club, and I have a very special guest in here with me to do some commentary. The man who makes it all possible, the visionary behind Spin TV, Disc Mania, Disc Golf Park, and many other promotional ventures, Yusim Resmo, welcome. Thank you, Jamie. Glad to be here. All right. Today, we have a really awesome showcase. We've got... The guys who have been battling out all year on tour, we've got Ricky Wasaki, Simon Lazard, Paul McBeth, and Nico Castro. So you know there's going to be some great action. Let's dive right in. Hole one. We're starting off on a long par four. Yes, this hole one is actually one of the most trickiest par fours to play, and you really need to get the long distance from the tee to be in the clear. So let's see what these guys can do. All right, we're starting off with Ricky Wasaki, who has a two-stroke lead over Macbeth and LaCastro, and a five-stroke lead over Dismania's own Simon Lazat. So Ricky's going to take his uh, drive, and he's going to hyzer flip it. It goes off towards the right, hard to see in the trees, and you can see just at the end there, it skips back in towards the fairway, and that's a really big shot. That's right where you want to be on this hole. That's a long shot, yeah. Paul is going to take a Blizzard Champion Destroyer. This was a go-to for him all weekend, and it looks like he starts this round with a little bit of grip issues and gets a nasty skip that's not going to help him out, and he's going to be deep in the shul trying to find a way out of there. And Nico LaCastro is lining up. Most of these guys are going to take a backhand shot, taking out the cart path, which is OB on the right, forcing the disc to fade to the left as the fairway widens out down at the end. And this is a pretty big shot. He's got it turned over just a little much, and he may be out of bounds. We're going to have to wait and see what happens there. And here comes the cannon, Simon Lazat, making effortless distance seem easy. And he's going to go big. This is a big, high hyzer flip, panning out very nicely against the beautiful vista behind it, missing the cameraman just by a couple feet, and he's going to be safe in bounds. Paul's going to have to pitch out here. And that's tough when you have to pitch out on the very first hole of the tournament or the round. Yes, correct. And that was the only play that he could do on that position. And sometimes it's just better to uh, pick your battles, and Paul has chosen to do that. Unfortunately, he's looking like he's having grip issues so far early in this round. Tell me about that. If we have 150 class discs, do you have to change your grip or your technique at all? Not necessarily the grip on technique, but uh, there will be a timing issues because you're throwing the lighter plastic, so you need to have some time to adjust the discs, and that's sometimes it's difficult. And we've been having, in addition to the players swapping out their entire bags, you know, you've, you're playing in these conditions which went from not great to downright nasty throughout this entire week of play. As we see Nico right there, he was out of bounds. He is going to pitch up with a nice upshot. Ricky is playing this, like I always say, textbook. Yeah, beautiful. Put right by the pin, and that's going to leave him an easy drop in for three and a great way to try to add to his lead early. To worse. Paul's going to saw off a hyzer a little bit there, and he's going to be down in the bush putting uphill. And that's a tricky part of this course, That on both of these courses, actually. We have uphill elevated baskets. Yes, most of the baskets are either on a hill or really close to an OB, so you really need to have... A a mental toughness when you're going those spots and you can see Nico here he's lining up his spot and even these 20 25 footers you really need to take carefully you don't want to miss those ones and now because I'm learning meters that's going to be about a six to seven meter putt and Nico's going to cash that making it a four Simon's also going to drop in for a four Ricky adding to his lead with a birdie Onto the second hole, which is another par four. We're starting off this course with two long par fours, 273 meters, just under 900 feet. And what are the challenges of designing a par four that, that are not too easy for people with this kind of range? Well, the distance is of course one thing. These are really long par fours. They are almost 300 meters. And also they are pretty narrow. Even this looks like a pretty wide, it's actually hard to get it straight down to the fairway over 100 meters and for example here Nico is actually pulling his drive over but fortunately he is probably inbounds because it skips back from the ground 
He will get that Anheuser angle sharp enough that it does cut roll towards inbounds. And Simon's going to line up a bomb. And you know he's got to love these kind of holes. And unfortunately, that downhill angle, just like you're talking about, UC, gets the better of him there. Paul's going to bring in the green destroyer. Another go-to, and he, fig he you can tell he corrects off of the other player's mistakes. He puts it nice and low. The skip will be there, but he's going to be inbounds. He's not going to take that penalty stroke, which can be costly on this course. There's a lot of OB. Yes, and especially on this hole, you want to be on the left side. That leaves you more angles to go to the green. And Nico's going to get caught up in the long grass, the rough, which uh, for disc golfers is not such long grass. But, you know, when you're playing 150 class and you're used to playing these large skips like you see Simon get right there, you know, you've got to also bring in that element uh, playing on a golf course, figuring out how your disc is going to react with the speed of these greens. And Paul's did skip over into the woods, so he's going to take a putter hyzer and try to avoid that OB that he's throwing directly at, and he leaves it short. Yep. Ricky's going to take a forehand approach at it, and, and this is a funny little skip. He's going to skip up the hill and unfortunately roll back down the other side. And like we're talking about, these tricky elevated baskets make you think that much more about what you're doing. And Nico's going to take a putter approach up here and try to avoid the OB on the right side as well lands just soft but that will look out a putt it is uphill but it is a putt nonetheless simon's gone out of bounds twice on this hole what would you tell him right now if you were a caddy in for him uh, he needs to calm down i mean it's a long long round and it's only a second hole so he can't lose the tournament here he needs to pull through you see the players uh, have that sort of issue where they need to choose whether to lay up or run it and go to the next hole that may be more birdieable you see the discussion here about Ricky's lie. There's some confusion as to where he should take the putt. And uh, it's going to get sorted out, but you can tell a uh, light and a fire in, uh, in Ricky's eyes right there. And he bangs that putt. Very nicely done. Nico has a very similar looking putt on the other side of the hill. And he'll cash that one as well. And these should be relatively easy for Simon and Paul to finish up this hole. And you gotta, you gotta say this view on this course, looking down over the valleys, that's really picturesque. You know, what do you think this does for disc golf to be able to play tournaments on courses like this? Well, it's an extreme opportunity. Normally, we don't have this kind of a courses or, you know, scenery to play with, and we've been lucky enough to have these opportunities. Yeah, absolutely right. And the camera doesn't do it justice what you're able to see here. I have to tell you, it was a tremendous opportunity to be able to come and film this tournament. And uh, hopefully, you know, some of these shots will help you see it. Hole three, this is a hole you really want to birdie. It's 112 meters, 367 feet. For these guys, it's a basic forehand shot. Yes, it is. And as you can see, Ricky is taking wide left and he wants to skip in, so he will be putting on that one. Uh, Nico is actually going straight to the basket with the putter, which is an extremely hard shot because you go over the bunker and you need to lay up between the bunkers, and this is perfect shot. He's going to be parked. And if you don't know at home, bunkers are out of bounds. You play them like any other out of bounds in disc golf. Take it from where it last went in. So you can be... 20 feet from a basket and a lot of holes on this course and be in the bunker. So there's not, safety is not guaranteed even on what would normally be chip shots for these top level players. And as you can see Simon here, he's gonna saw it off a little bit early on that forehand and he's gonna get a rough skip and a putt that you would normally make and you have to take a penalty stroke and really think about the strategy. And he's gonna run that putt, come on just off the top. And here's a putt for Ricky. He's been challenged these last couple holes, and he wants to maintain this lead. So this birdie would be really crucial for him to do so just short. With a death putt behind him, you got to think that factored into his mind yeah, a little bit. that must affect Ricky for a putt. So with so many death putts on this course, how, how aggressive and how conservative did you play this weekend? You shot the hot round today, 52, tying Ricky. What was your strategy on the putt green? 
well today I was going for it because obviously last round I'm pretty far away from the lead so I wanted to play my best round so I was going for pots and eventually I made all my pots today so I was really happy with that but typically I don't run those pots like Simon did on that hole that was great Hey, and if your putting is feeling on, then you don't have to worry about running it. And this is hole four. We're having another kind of chip shot hole, and there's even more bunkers around this one. This is a really touchy hole, and Nico's gonna put it very yeah. nicely. You wanna go for the basket here. You don't wanna leave it short, because then you're gonna go, and then you're gonna have a long uh, par putt, but it looks like uh, Paul is going wide left. He might be open, maybe not. That's gonna be a hard putt for him. Ricky definitely want to go wider right like he does and that's going to be behind the basket. And it's so tough to see from the angle of the camera is very similar to what the players are seeing so you don't necessarily know you just got to kind of rely on the practice rounds you put in and see where you put that disc. Simon knows right off the bat he's launched that one a little bit too far. Paul is safe on this. He was safe not by much but the fringe was not OB so he's going to have this putt running it with confidence and that's a tough break hitting weak side chastity belt on top of that basket and back spinning to the strong side bunker simon was ob but he makes his comeback putt for three and i think uh yeah ricky is also ob so he's kind of putting for par and you can see nico so far has started to challenge ricky to this uh point he is not bogeyed and uh, that's uh, going to try to cut into his teammate's lead and challenge him as it comes down later in this round. He thinks about this putt, puts it in very nicely, and uh, it's, it's really tough. You know, I saw a lot of players struggle on these next few holes with the OB, the tight greens, and the, all the challenges of a lot of downhill play on this course. As we see, Paul is going to tap in right there, and we go on to hole number five. Hole number five is extra tricky. So you're playing out of bounds, what's essentially an island shot from pin to green, and you have trees on the right side that block the hyzer, and if you throw the forehand or the lefty hyzer route, you're risking skipping it back out of bounds. What What is the course designer here just being vindictive or what's going on? Well, this is a, actually is a pretty much downhill hole and you can play it safe left with the hyzer but then you need to really negotiate with the right side tree so for example Nico is going for a hyzer line and throwing a high hyzer and now he needs to get through those trees and uh, it seems like yeah he he actually hit the tree and fell short so he's going to be on the drop zone. Uh, Ricky is a great sidearm thrower and this is in his advantage on, on this course. So he can go clear side all the way, you know, not over the OB and he's actually a little past the basket, good shot. And you definitely want to err on the side of being long on this hole. Uh, like he said, any out of bounds off the tee here, you do have to go to the drop zone, which is uh, just one of the shorter golf tees and you're not really changing the shot, you're just changing the distance. So it's tricky either way. Simon does a very nice job. That's a touch spike hyzer, and that's a shot that Simon is, is known for. He's got the range dialed in on those spike hyzers like very few other people do. Paul throws a nice forehand there as well to park the basket. And the drop zone is actually pretty far away, so Nico is throwing like 50 meter hyzer still, and he, he parks the hole. And he'll take that and not give up too many strokes. Ricky doesn't want to lose strokes either. So he's got a tester putt with death behind it, and he cans it. And when he's putting like that, Ricky Wasaki is tough to beat. We saw it earlier this year, and uh, we're seeing it so far today as well. And there's a solid putt from Paul. And uh, this hole, you can swing. You can take twos, you can take fives, you can take sevens. This is a make-or-break hole in the tournament, as, as many different players carded many different scores here. So hole six, this is a par four. This is a shorter par four relative to this course. It's only 220 meters, 721 feet. With the range that these guys have, they should be able to get to the green and have a look. But what's the tricky part about this hole? This hole is uh, really birdie able and that's why our guys are going for it. And the drive can be deceiving because it's falling down left and all the left side, as you can see, the shul and the trees are OB. So the guys are throwing over the OB 
Oh, actually, Ricky took a Heiser route, and he's actually flipping it over, so this is not a good drive. He, he found some OB on the right, probably. Uh, Simon, he actually parked this hole during the practice, and what? let's see what he does now. He chunks his drive, and that's a, that's a long one. So that corner where the photo guy is, that's actually pin high, so he had 200-meter drive there. That's a 721-foot drive from Simon Lazat and parked it in the practice round, had a 40-foot run at it the round before, and is pin high once again. The guy has an arm, there is no doubt. Paul plays a great safe hyzer right to the middle of the fairway, and Nico's gonna line up. He's gonna go for it as well. He's gonna get it, break it just over. It's gonna pan out pretty nicely though. Yeah, and the right side where Nico is is pretty good. You can have a good view for the to the basket, and you can chip your putter and take your birdie. And the tough part of Ricky's shot here is only being able to take that meter in bounds and still being so far away. That's the crucial part of staying in bounds off the tee on these par fours. As you see, he leaves it short, and he's going to have to take the bunker. Uh, Nico is playing like I'm playing. I'm playing wide right, and I want to take my birdie putt from the right side from the green. You're going to eliminate the danger as much as possible on that birdie putt. Correct. Paul's going to go right over it. That's a touch putter shot, what the beast is known for. That's why he's got two world titles, not a problem. Simon's going to line up a little jump putt. He likes that little mini jump putt maneuver when he's a good 150 feet from the basket. It's no problem. He's got it dialed in. That's a pro-level shot, though, not too easy. And they discuss Ricky's spot, and that's a big putt right there. Nice. Nico wants to answer with a putt of his own, and this would be for a three on this par four easily done once again and we're going to see simon and paul with uh, much easier birdies can't really play the hole much better than either of them did even though they both took different routes to the basket it goes to show you that no matter how far you throw the approach game is the most important part of golf or disc golf because two very different shots two very different approaches and they're going to net the same score we're going to go on to hole seven Hole seven, this is tricky because there's actually a triple mando that's been constructed and you're playing left to right, but back up an embankment to a basket on a hill. And this is a very touch shot. Yes, it is. And Simon is actually taking a backhand shot, which is even tougher because it bounces back from the slope. And uh, Paul is having a sidearm flick, which is actually good on this hole because it goes right towards to the basket and he parks the hole easily. And what they're gonna do with the sidearm is have that jump up the hill. Like, like Yuzi's saying, you don't, wanna, uh, you don't wanna conflict the angle of the disc with the angle of the green and then roll away, shoot very hard. But another thing that is very tough to see is these guys have tremendous touch and they're putting the right amount of power on the disc so it sits by the basket and it doesn't skip too far in either direction. And you're going to see from Ricky a little bit of the squirrely action that sometimes happens in these windy conditions with these lighter weight discs. And these all should be routine tap-ins. Uh, this is a hole you really want to birdie. Yes, it is, but there is a couple of threads on this hole, and that's the bunker that we can see in front of the basket. You need to go over that if you want to go to the basket. So it's not the gimme, but you should have this in this tournament. And there's a reason these guys are on the lead card is because they made this one look a lot easier than it actually is. We're going on to hole eight. Hole eight is what I call a four digit separator. If you are not thousand rated, this is a hole you're gonna think about. There's danger to the left, there's OB. It's basically an uphill island hole where a tree line is blocking half of your throw. Uh, but if you're over four digits, this is one that you really wanna get. Yes, and this is a basic putter approach shot for most of the players. And the only, only thing here is the slope and the hill. You want to land your disc on a good spot so it doesn't roll or skip OB. And that's exactly what Paul Macbeth does, taking that Nova and just putting it on the pin. Nico's gonna also throw, looks to be a putter on an Annie, and he's gonna stay on that side of the hill, matching that angle of the disc to the angle of the hill, sitting looking at it. Ricky going forehand again, which has played to his advantage all week out here. These courses do favor somebody with a forehand shot. And I even saw the champ throw some forehand, and I haven't seen that very often. 
right and Simon is facing a big pot yeah uh, there was an OB behind the basket OB behind the basket a tailwind surely would have pushed it out no doubt for somebody like Simon also somebody like Nico two very great putters and uh, you see that's something that really separates these guys from a lot of the rest of the field is these guys have no fear on the putting green and they they make it when they go for those long ones and it's just an impressive thing to watch and that's hole eight hole nine we're going to come up to the end of the first nine of your round going back to a par four this is probably the shortest par four on the course it's 180 meters the basket is actually across the ob cart path so this one they're going to play it like a river as long as you're not in the path you're safe which is unlike the other holes and here's a special shot from simon yeah it's a 360 which I also use on this hole. You can get the little extra distance and it's an uphill hole and it's a really wide fairway so you can do this and Simon is pumping it up. Uh, that hill that he went over is actually 130, 40 meters. So that was a long shot. A very big shot from somebody who's known for making those shots. And uh, Paul's gonna put it a little more of a control shot. Doesn't do the 360. He did try it out in practice and decided against it during the round. That's a nice center fairway shot. Nico seems to have a roller here because of the side run-up. Let's see what happens. He pumps it up and matches a good angle, and that can be a really good one. You can actually go longer here with the roller if you match the angle. Yeah, and he's going to be facing a pretty easy upshot from there. And the short grass of the golf course, the manicured grass does make it easy for a roller, but it can't be that easy to roll these 150 glass discs. That's a lot of touch. Ricky's going to put a nice high hyzer flip on it, allowing that lightweight plastic to really ride out the wind and get that similar kind of distance. And uh, Simon is actually going to be up first. He's the furthest from the pin, even though he's a good 50, 60 feet further up the fairway uh, than his opponents. Uh, he did fade out to the left, put it just over the hill. That should be no problem to get up and down. Paul's going to run it straight at it. This is a great run. And just a little bit short, but he hits metal. You know you're on target when you hit metal. Better to hit low than high. And that was a great shot as well. Ricky's going to pull out the forehand approach and skip up the hill, and he will be in bounds. And uh, Nico's going to do something really interesting here. It's a short shot, so I don't know why he's using the run-up. It's a standstill shot, and he seems a little nervous, and he actually lets that too low. We'll see what happens. He's a little tentative, you could tell. is one of those in-between distances that everybody has those kind of in-between distances that, that are tough to figure out. And uh, you could tell he wasn't happy with that result right there. Yeah. And he's going to be first up. That is his disc sitting in the middle of the asphalt, but they, they marked his lie right there. He took his meter in, which is legal, towards the basket, and he's going to have an uphill putt. He takes, he takes his time thinking about it, doesn't want to have to deal with the danger of a roll away you know these guys did just play de la viega and that's probably still fresh in their minds the danger that that course brings but he does he is able to can it and get out of that hole without too much damage done yeah, ricky was safe and he's tapping his birdie and this is a death putt going up and down nice yeah. and easy making it look easy no worries probably Ford. simon is not gonna wait that much right he's a fast guy Simon's not known for waiting. He gets right to it. Uh, there's, no, there's no fooling around. And uh, that will be hole nine. We are halfway through. Ricky, Paul, and Nico have actually all scored the same. They are 27, which is four under par. Simon is two back after he had that rough start, took that six on hole two. But should note, he ended on five birdies. So he's back to two under par and will go on to the back nine. UC, thank you so much for being here. Your insight on this course and on these players is, is invaluable. And we really appreciate all you do for Spin TV and for the sport. We hope to have you back real soon. Thank you. All right, guys, stay tuned. Coming up, we have another very special guest commentator, somebody who knows a thing or two about Japan and winning some tournaments on the biggest stage. Check back very soon. Until then, I'm Jamie Thomas for UC Maresma. Keep watching Spin TV.